G'day everyone, welcome back to another weekly tipping video on the channel. Going to be going over my tips for round 11 of the 2024 AFL season. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you do go on to enjoy today's video. And as always, let's start off with how I went last week. Okay, so my tips from round 10, and I think I had a pretty good week of the old tipping as I managed to get myself a 7 out of 9. Got a few of those 50-50 calls correct. Went with the Suns, back them at home up there in Darwin, and geez, how about that? Their highest score ever. Um, in history, they managed to hit 164 points and get a 10-plus goal win over the Cats. Backed in the Swannies at home over the Blues, a massive second-half uh, resurgence, really, to win that one by over 50 points. Uh, backed in the Pies over the Crows, but I gave Adelaide their flowers. I thought I could pinch this one, but yeah, Collingwood at home, they're just hard to go against over there at the G. Went with GWS with this tip, but how about the Bulldogs there? In fact, they pretty much obliterated them with scoring shots and also ran the football. Really easy tip with Brisbane at home and the Dockers away against the Saints. Can't be trusting the Saints with tipping at the moment. They just can't score. And then for the Sunday games, we all thought this would be an easy three with Essendon getting the win over North Melbourne. Port Adelaide over Hawthorne, but geez, what almost like a stolen victory this was. What a crazy finish, kicking two goals in the final 30 seconds. You got to feel, you know, I got to feel for those Hawthorne supporters. And how about that? West Coast, a massive scalp over in the West over the D's and now questions on Melbourne. So a 7 out of 9 for round 10. Okay, a quick look at my Rolls Maca tipping competition leaderboard updates. Uh, nobody got themselves a full 9 out of 9. A lot of people got 8 and also a lot of people did get 7. Uh, but as for who is leading my tipping comp, still is Magpies FX with a total score of 87. Okay, now let's begin with my tips for round 11. We start Thursday night footy, the Bulldogs and the Swans over there at Marvel Stadium. Swannies at the moment, they are just on fire. Uh, they are the clear best team in the competition, it has to be said, sitting one and a half games clear on top. Their turnover game, their punish, um, and their ball movement has just been outstanding. They're the number one team for points from defensive half and points off turnover. So, you know, when those numbers are in the, are in the green, um, they're going to be a tough team to beat. But as for the Bulldogs... Hard to get a gauge on them. They're now two wins on the trot. Yes, they do show inconsistencies, but over there at Marvel Stadium, under the roof, at their playpen, they usually can play some of their best football. Uh, I doubt that McCartan and Liberatore are both going to play for for their respective teams. So both sides with, the, with their concussion issues. Uh, but forward of the ball, I'll tell you what, Sam Darcy is really now starting to shake the competition a bit. And I think he could maybe get a hold of a few of those Swannies key backs with the absence of McCartan potentially. Ed Richards has been in great form ever since Liberatoria has gone out. He's been massive to their clearance game and also just his decision making. Um, he's always so classy, so he's been a big addition to their midfield. But when you do look at the Swans, they're just ticking every box at the moment. Uh, defensively, very sound when the ball hits a deck at ground level. Uh, they move the ball really well, um, uh, forward of center and also from their defensive half, they pick apart targets in the corridor. And of course, let's not forget about their pressure too. It has been outstanding. I think I should back in the Swannies here. Um, it's hard to go against them, but I wouldn't say the Swans are necessarily due for a loss. I like to just think of it more as the Bulldogs at home. I feel like they can take a scalp here or there. Against the top teams, I haven't been great this year, but I'm sensing a little bit of an upset here. I just think the Dogs at Marvel, they are different gravy and they are very unpredictable. I feel like the Swans should be too good here um, if they do turn up to play this game, but... I might go with the Bulldogs here. I'm just feeling like they can match the Swans in the cold face. Bont and Pelly can have a game. Maybe James Jordan uh, goes to Bailey Dale instead of Bont, so he can have an influence. And behind the footy too, the likes of Liam Jones has been magnificent too. So I'm going against the grain here. This could really not pay off, but I'm feeling a bit of an upset from the Doggies to knock off the Swans uh, at Marvel, where they play their good football. So the Dogs to pick up a massive scout over the Swannies and win by seven points. For Friday Night Football now, we do have the Dockers hosting the Pies over there at Optus Stadium. Uh, Fremantle, they have also been a team that have been a little bit up and down in terms of results. But I'll tell you what, their past four weeks has been a lot better. Uh, they're now starting to play with a bit more dare with their ball movement. Uh, they are loving that hand passing game through the corridor. It has seemed to really work well. It was a bit of an outlier result against Sydney. You know, the passing, unfortunately, of Cam McCarthy would have obviously hurt the players, but their effort was very good. The main issue, though, is their ability to score. Um, how are they going to put on big points? Because that has sort of been their issue, their conversion um, in front of the big sticks. And against the Pi side, who are just flying at the moment, um, their pressure has been outstanding. They're starting now to show that premiership profile of strong team defense. Um, when the ball's in congestion, just how they can get, um, get out of the... Con get 
the ball out of congestion really quickly um, and just punish punish opposition teams has been very, very good. Always is usually a tough task to head over to Perth and knock off the Dockers. Uh, the home field advantage should definitely help Fremantle here. Will this be the week where they can finally convert in front of the big sticks? Like, you know, Paddy Voss, still a young player, but his conversion has letting, been letting him down. Same with Jai Miss too. So because of that, I just have questions over the pies that can always put on scoreboard pressure as quick as a flash. So going to be back in Collingwood here over the free mental dockers over there in Perth. And the pies run away with it and win by 16 points. Next game, we have Port Adelaide taking on North Melbourne over there at Blundstone Arena. The Kangaroos yet to pick up their first win of the season. When will it come? Uh, the first half was pretty competitive, though, um, against the uh, Bombers. And that's always what North have been able to show when they have been up and about. They can produce a really strong clearance game. Uh, LDU probably had his best game of the season and etc. Uh, Tom Powell had a decent game in the trenches trenches too. Harry Sheasel's now playing more on the ball, but still issues off the turnover, and geez, they have some terrible unforced turnovers. That's what's really letting them down. Uh, Port Adelaide have been a bit more of a vulnerable team the last few weeks or so. Um, got a very fortunate win over the Hawks, but credit to them, the resilience they showed to come back and win that game. They haven't, they don't really regularly show that, so that was, that was a great sight to see if you are a Port Adelaide supporter. So, yeah, it's just hard to tip North Melbourne at the moment. Doubt it comes against Port Adelaide, who are usually pretty strong in those bottom teams, and they should win this one well, the power, and get the win over there in Tassie and win it by 34 points. For the Saturday games now, first one up, we do have Carlton hosting the Gold Coast Suns over there at Marvel Stadium. Very disappointing result for the Blues last week. It was easily their worst loss of this year, but they have been in a lot of close games, so... Yeah, that was just the game that really did break them. Uh, the injuries, though, are definitely hurting them. Uh, Jacob Wiedering going out in the second half. Uh, no Cottrell, uh, no Fogarty, no Jesse Motlop. They are losing. They have lost a lot of those important role players. But back at home under Marvel Stadium, this is where they usually turn it up and play their good, their good brand of football. Uh, but Gold Coast, got to give them their flowers. Uh, they're now starting to... Uh, apart from that Brisbane loss in the Q clash, they're now starting to um, tick over a couple of wins. Uh, they got, obviously, the, the two wins over there in Darwin. A massive, massive win for their football club, though, over the Cats uh, up there in Darwin, too. But the question for them is, can they do it south of the border? So if this is sort of like one of those games where if it was at Gold Coast home ground, I'd probably give them the edge here. But the Blues at Marvel Stadium are usually a tough team to beat. Gold Coast midfield, though, is in terrific form. Tuke Miller, Noah Anderson, Matt Rowell, uh, Swallow was thrown in there a little bit too, Alex Davies as well. Uh, they have uh, been a midfield group that has been able to really torment teams and this is a chance to try and get on top of the Blues, like what the Swans were able to do. Dominate and center, center bounces and try and get on top of those areas. Behind the 42, like Sam Collins and Ballard have been really sound in defense, so I feel like they are a talented team enough to win this game of football, but I just have issues. Can they do it south of the border? And for me, it's just hard to go hard to go against the Blues. So you can really see this game going either way, but Kerno Mackay, I think, are due for, for a big game as well. Um, so I'll be backing in the Blues here over the Suns, and they'll win this one by 18 points. Saturday afternoon football, we have the Cats hosting the GWS Giants over there at GMHBA Stadium. Interesting matchup this one, the Giants... Just have the wood over the Cats over there in Geelong. It's such an interesting matchup, this one. GWS just always seem to win in Geelong against the Cats. Both teams, though, off the back of three losses in a row. The Cats midfield is starting to get exposed a little bit. And as for the Giants, just they look really soft around the contest. And their defensive transition is really letting them down. And what's happened to their ball movement? It's just not It's just not shown much dare, too. So both teams definitely have their weaknesses at the moment. It's just a matter of who can bounce back, who can get on top. Um, you know, looking at GWS's midfield, it has been out of form, but you'd think with that Giants midfield, they can really do a number on Geelong's with still no danger field and etc. Uh, but as for the Cats, they still get over 100 points um, against the Suns. Defensively in their midfield, they were eaten alive. I mean, Tom Stewart was well negated, but still how they move the football is very good against the Suns. So if they can somewhat replicate that and back at home in, in Geelong, um, if they can really get their ball movement going. Um, I don't know if Jeremy Cameron's going to come back in, but if he is, he's going to be a massive inclusion. 
Uh, so might just back in the cats here at home. But we say this every time with this matchup, the Giants always seem to get up. Uh, but just with how both teams are going at the moment, if the Giants were in a bit more better of form, and look, I, I think they're due for a bounce back. This could be the game where they could get um, could get the win here, could get on top of that midfield. And look, Jesse Hogan for the centre has been fantastic too. But I'll back in Geelong, given it's at home. And um, yeah, they do move the footy really well. So yeah, the Cats will pick up the win here over GWS. Probably a game that has a lot of lead changes, but the Cats will call home in the fourth quarter and win this one by 13 points. And Saturday Night Football here, we have the Tigers hosting the Bombers over there at the MCG. Dreamtime game, this one is always um, a great great sightings to see uh, pre-game, of course. Uh, but as for the Tigers, geez, have they really dropped off the last few weeks. The injuries are now really starting to take its toll. Um, prior to that, they were very competitive and their scoreboard pressure was pretty good. Uh, but now, off the back of pretty much, um, well, last week they lost by over 100 points and almost lost by over 100 points uh, against the Bulldogs. So, yeah, they are really struggling at the moment. I think it's like 25, 26 current fit players on their list. Um, unfortunately, Sam Naismith, condolences out to him as a Swan supporter. He went down with a um, unfortunate uh, another ACL injury in the VFL. Hard team to tip at the moment, the Tigers. I want to say they can maybe win a quarter or two. I mean, Essendon... Can you trust them to just completely obliterate opponents? They have looked very good, though, the Bombers. Um, their midfield game um, just throughout the past few weeks has been outstanding. They're just a much more tougher team on and off the field, I think. They're a much more resilient team, a well-drilled side at the moment. Uh, four to centre, they have in their weapons. Mackay behind the footy has been very good, too. Um, and, yeah, Todd Goldson in the ruck has been a revelation for their season, too. So, yeah, going to be backing in the Bombers here. Should really win this one convincingly with how... Both teams are going at at the moment, so the Bombers to win this one by 30 points. For the Sunday games now, first one up, we do have the Hawkies taking on the Brisbane Lions. Don't know why I said Hawkies, uh, the Hawks, whatever, um, at Marvel Stadium. Uh, Brisbane, this is usually a tough team to beat. Uh, they sometimes do struggle um, against those Hawks. Uh, and this one at Marvel Stadium too. So it's the first game at Marvel for the Lions this year. Last month, the footy from Hawthorne has been very, very good. Um, you know, their ground level game and their pressure and their ability to win contests um, around the ground, especially in and under, has been very good. Uh, John Newcomb and Connor Nash and Warpaw are now really starting to show show promising numbers. And uh, Will Day, uh, he's now, I think, off the back of a very good game. So he should really improve with match fitness. And they still have, I'm pretty sure, Jack Scrimshaw and also James Sicily to come back into the team. As for Brisbane, though, I think whenever you look at tipping, they are usually the better team on paper. And they are definitely here against the Hawks. So away from home, they really should find a way to win this game. Uh, the midfield can really get on top, you'd think. The likes of Lockie Neal, he's been in really good form the past few weeks. And Josh Dunkley as well in the trenches. Pretty sure they are going to be without Eric Hipwood though, so it's the likes of Joe Danaher and especially Logan Morris to now um, have another game in the first and see what he's got. He's um, had some nice cameos the past few weeks. Kyle Lohman as well off the back of a career high five goals and I'm also pretty sure that uh, Zach Bailey is going to finally make his return from injury so that's a massive inclusion uh, into their midfield and forward half game. I think when you look at that Brisbane side on paper they have the weapons to really punish Hawthorne's defence so yeah, I expect them to get up here and get this win um, over the Hawks. Brisbane, just a better team on paper. Um, behind the football, Harris Andrews has looked very sound too. And a confidence-boosting win for sure um, over the Tigers. So, yeah, I think Brisbane should win this game. But I might go with the upset here with Hawthorne. Um, they've just proved me, proven me wrong the past couple of weeks. I mean, I have said, though, I think Hawthorne will get better as the season progresses and they'll start to see the wins. But... They're just a tough team to play against, I think, at the, at the moment, the Hawks. The ground levels game's been very good, and they are just um, playing some great footy at the moment. And look, off the back of that Port Adelaide win, I think they'll be... Port Adelaide loss, sorry. I think they'll be pretty angry, and I reckon they can knock off the Lions here, um, which can be a bit of a vulnerable, vulnerable team. So, yeah, Hawthorne, I reckon, can win this game, knock off the Lions... And yeah, really get on top of that midfield battle. And um, yeah, just put them in their shells a little bit. So yeah, Hawthorne, maybe like a, a fourth quarter. I reckon like a fourth quarter sort of resurgence. And we'll get over the top of lines and win this one by nine points. Then Sunday afternoon football, we have the D's hosting the Saints over there at the NCG. Um, as I've been saying in the past few weeks, I still think St. Kilda's effort in their running power has been pretty good. But geez, what's led them down is just their execution um, forward to center. Like it's been terrible like just so disgusting to watch um their slow build up yes they do like to control the football and they did that last year it's just that they were able to play a little bit more faster and even the start of the year too they were able to really get it forward of center quickly and hit targets win contests at grand level 
and just kick some lovely goals too. Um, I really think though they have missed Jack Higgins and also Dan Butler. Their forward pressure has really let them down. Um, you know, Philip, who again had like four touches, so you'd think he goes back on the twos. I'm pretty sure Jack Higgins is back in this week. Yeah, they're three match suspension, I'm pretty sure. So he's to come back from the team, but geez, their midfield has really been letting them down. So there's Brad Crouch come back in. That's why he had a good game in the twos. Uh, maybe a Hunter Clark as well. They need some reinforcements in there because Jack Steele currently isn't looking 100% uh, at the moment. So, you know, they had Zach Jones thrown in there a little bit too. So, yeah, I think Melbourne, they have been um, out of form a little bit though. They've dropped the past two games and geez, they looked far off it um, against the Eagles. That was their worst loss for quite some time. Uh, they just didn't want it. Um, they were pretty weak uh, around the contest. So, this is where, uh, this is a chance to try and hit, um, a chance for the Saints to try and hit uh, Melbourne while they are down. But, Look, the D's at the MCG, always usually a tough team to beat. Um, they're the better team on paper. Petrarca, Oliver, Gorn, just all those names just scream at you and you'd think they should find a way. Forda Centre, though, they are having their issues, uh, but maybe we could see a big game from somebody. I don't know when Jacob Van Rooyen comes back in the team, though. I'll tell you what, though, I think this game could genuinely be low scoring, but Melbourne will run away with this game by 13 points. In the final game of the round, we do have the Crows hosting the West Coast Eagles at the Adelaide Oval. Um, yeah, West Coast have been very good at home this season now. Um, ever since they got that massive win over the Tigers, I've been able to knock off um, Fremantle in a massive win. Get very close and a gallant defeat against the Bombers. And how about that? That is probably their best win of the season over the Melbourne Football Club. Just such an entertaining team to watch at home at the moment. Uh, their clearance in the midfield game has been excellent. Of course, led by Harley Reid, um, some of his individual brilliance has been out outstanding to watch. But four to centre too, like with no Oscar Allen, Jake Waterman is having a career best season. Behind the footy, McGovern's been very good um, in the air too. Duggan's been composed at halfback. A lot of the veterans are really gelling together nicely. Uh, but how do they go away from home though? Because they have uh, yet to to pick up a win um, away from home this season. I think Adelaide at home are just always a tough team to beat regularly, and this should really be um, a win coming down Adelaide's way. Um, but, you know, for West Coast, they've been able to challenge good teams um, in the clearances, so could they get on top of the centre bounce and also the stoppages? There may be a good chance to lead at like half time, let's say. But um, yeah, Adelaide, they'd be definitely filthy with dropping that game uh, against the Pies. Scoring issues was apparent last week, though. But, um, you know, their ability to move the football has been much better the past month or so. And I think at home at Adelaide, they should really do a number on West Coast, try and get on top of that midfield. Um, and, you know, like Dor Jordan Dawson and also salego has been in good form also in the middle, though. Isaac Rankin out foot with the hamstrings. Really going to hurt them, though. But the Crows should be too good here um, over the Eagles questions on West Coast on can they win away from home so Adelaide at the Adelaide Oval always a tough team to knock off so the Crows should win the final game of the round knock off the Eagles here and win this one by 26 points so everyone there were my tips for round 11 of the 2024 AFL season let me know what your tips are going to be down below in the comments section always love to hear your people's opinions hopefully you did enjoy today's video make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did go and to enjoy and then until next time I will talk to you later see you later fellas